Well, all right, we are here with Mr. Rick at his garage where he's working on his new turbine. This must be exciting, brother. Very exciting. Uh, we're we gonna do a test start here. Pretty much got the mechanics together. As you can see, uh, this is one of the critical moments when you build a turbine engine. What I try to do um, basically is basically put the rotor hand on so it has some weight so the engine doesn't start really free spinning because it's a lot of torque. And as I build, I put everything on the frame for as far as the uh, jet engine is concerned. The fuel valve, the the, 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 uh, the fuel pump, the filters, the tank, everything is assembled on the frame. So reason being, if you have to work on the unit, take it outside the fuselage, you can actually take it out, the whole unit out of the fuselage and actually start it up and run it. And you can do your uh, pre-flight check, find what's wrong with the engine. I had a gasic earlier today. I was able to pull the fuel fuel line off, pull the filter out. As you can see, the filter comes out. And I was able to change the filter, retighten it, without taking the whole thing apart. So this save you a little shortcut, a little time consuming, uh, but in the end, this save you a lot of headaches and confusion. Everything is self-contained, um, and you have to have to design it. It doesn't come that way. You have to have to des design it yourself. So pretty much you just line everything up. Everything is, is a straight level. And the other thing about doing it this way also, if you have to send the machine back to the factory for maintenance, basically all I have to do is take the four bolts off here, pull the, the, uh, the fuel line off, and the uh, gas valve off, whole machine comes off, everything else stays intact. Just go back to the factory, the jet cat, come back in, full bolt, main, uh, put it back on, and you're done, you're set, you're ready to go. Very easy setup, a little time consuming, but it's worth the time and the wait. Now the question I have for you now is, um, the setup is very uh, interesting. Is it how every single um, mechanics are set up for every RCLE, or how many varieties of mechanics are there that, that you know of? That I know of, uh, Jack Cat has the, this is the, actually the P3, which means basically this turbine sits at the bottom. Uh, they have the P3-3, which actually the turbine sits at the top of the mechanic. Pretty much the same setup, uh, just a little different on the mechanic, the framing work. They also have a, what you call a PH, PH5, which is a, a, the turbine sits in the front, has a gearbox. Um, they're pretty much, pretty much similar to the same. Uh, for us, the mechanic setup, they run the same belt driven, uh, it's just the individual guy that's building the fuselage, what his particular needs are, how he wants to set it up. To me, I like everything simple, easy access to, that's just the way I build, it's a preference, but I find out if it's very easy to access, it's easier to maintain, to change stuff out. Uh, remember, this is very mechanical, stuff can go as electronic, this does break, not very often, so by having everything attached to the frame itself, if you want to change that one the fuel valve or you want to change that the uh, uh, the fuel line, it's right here, right in front of you. You pop it off, put the fuel line on, and you're done. Uh, a couple of minutes and you're done. What we're going to do now, uh, having started this engine up, we're going to do a test start. Uh, when you do a test start, pretty much I have everything is hooked up to the engine outside of the fuselage. I will fill up the uh, UBT tank, the fuel. And hopefully we get a good start and everything is hooked up everything right. We should have an engine run in a couple of minutes. Wow, this is exciting. We just filled it up again with, with butane fuel in this little uh, tank. Turbine, it starts on butane because kerosene is, is very hard to ignite. It starts on butane fuel. It's very easy to ignite. Get it to 400 degrees and the kerosene kicks on. Right. Okay. As, as you explained to us last time, I remember. Right, exactly. Uh, like I said, I make sure everything is hooked up correctly, which I double checked that already. Fuel, we're going to turn the fuel on over here. Okay. And now, because I don't have the receiver with this, actually the C receiver with the trend that starts the turbine, what do you do? You take the, the throttle cable, okay, actually the throttle uh, uh, wire, and you hook it to the speed, the speed sensor. And that allows you to use the ECU uh, mimic board to actually control the turbine itself. Okay? It doesn't say that in the book, but it's a little secret I'm revealing. Take the throttle cable that you would normally plug into the receiver and plug it into your airspeed controller on the ECU and allow you to control the engine through the computer ECU. We're gonna go for start. Yes sir, we're ready. 
And another thing, when, when you don't have the transmitter, when you plug this battery cable into the ECU, it's activated. So it's no on and off switch. Okay. Once I plug this in, everything comes on activated. Have this. As you see, it's lit up. Yes, sir. And the way you start it from the ECU, you want to hit manual and ignite at the same time. And the computer takes over from there. So we're just, we're just going to have a yell out, fire in the hole, so everybody knows. Might be a little pop, so they don't right. get upset.